Back in 2022 when I first reviewed the HD 7770, I was surprised by how it actually managed to run the games I threw at it. The 2023 revisit did show however a decline in performance as games got updated. That got me wondering, is the HD 7770 still usable in 2024? We'll continue the trend started with the previous review and we'll update the list of games that we'll attempt to run the card with. Feel free to press F in the comments for the games that didn't make it. The titles used in this video however are listed as timestamped chapters in the video description, so if you are already familiar with the card and the test system, you can skip ahead to the games that you're interested in. And speaking of the card, all of its properties can be viewed just fine in the GPU-Z window or the tech power-up page. I will however mention that just like the previous card, 1GB of GDDR5 will have to suffice for VRAM. At 80 watts TDP, the Intel stock cooler-like solution used here does a fairly good job, and the GPU warmed up to 83C in Warframe. This is a delta over ambient of 48C. However, for the longevity of the card, I used a more aggressive fan curve set in MSI Afterburner that drops the temperature well below 60C. Before we move to the gaming results, a quick note to the test system. The Z230 workstation using the Xeon equivalent of an i7-4770 and 32GB of 1600MHz DDR3 RAM in dual channel. Right, and we start off with Fallout 4, where at 1080 resolution and low settings, the Radeon card manages to cling to playable frame rates in Diamond City. 31 FPS for the 1% loss and 33 for the average are serviceable, and this is the worst case scenario for the game. Roaming around outside will have the average reaching 40s and the game feels better. 720 resolution increases these numbers to 51 FPS average and 47 FPS 1% loss for Diamond City, and 60 FPS average and 56 FPS for the 1% loss while running around through the wasteland. This lower resolution is probably a better option if you also plan to increase the visuals. Apex Legends managed to surprise me a bit. While the 1080 resolution results are far from ideal, at 48 FPS average and 34 FPS 1% lows, the game does become somewhat playable at 1600 by 900. The 1% lows in the low 40s is fine for me and I can't complain about the average, now at 61 FPS. Better frame rates can be achieved at 720 resolution and in my firing range test run, the average improved, now reaching high 70s. The 1% lows also went up, now in the low 50s. I didn't expect much out of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but the lowest settings and 1080 resolution almost did it for the HD 7770. The 1% lows of 25 however is also an indicator of how tough some of the scenes can be on the GPU. However, the initial gameplay is more forgiving and that reflects on an average above 30 FPS. Dropping the resolution however to 1600 by 900 gets the 1% lows at 31 FPS and the average in the low 40s. And at 720 resolution, the two numbers raise to 37 FPS for the 1% lows and 55 FPS respectively for the average. Now, that doesn't mean that the experience will be flawless. Even at 720 resolution and low settings, you will notice quite a bit of low resolution textures and quite a few texture poppings. While CS2 runs at 60 FPS on average, at 1080 resolution and low settings, the 1% lows at 45 will cause problems. The game is quite competitive, so I recommend dropping the resolution. 1600 by 900 puts the 1% lows in the mid 50s and the average at 74 and 720 resolution puts those numbers to 56 for the 1% lows and 85 for the average respectively. This then makes this latter resolution as the better choice. Borderlands 3 is a tougher one for the HD 7770, despite the average of 45 FPS. The resolution, 1280 by 720 and the very low settings are pretty much the easiest case scenario. And while the average is decent for single player, the 1% lows in the teens speaks volume of the game experience. Fine for most of the time, but with a decent seasoning of stutters, more frequently in large combat scenarios. I played game despite an even worse game experience, but I can understand why others will avoid this game and card combination. For Fortnite we'll cover both the regular Battle Royale game mode and the Reload mode introduced recently. Both of them were tested in performance mode, 100% resolution scale, and the draw distance set to far. At 1080 resolution, the regular battle royale average is in the low 60s and the 1% lows is in the low 40s. This is fine for me, I'm a casual player. But 
one cannot simply get more FPS, you'd have to drop the resolution for that. At 1600 by 900 the average FPS increases to 80, but unfortunately the 1% low stays put. It takes 720 resolution to put that 1% lows above 60, and with an average above 100, the game plays fine. The reload mode however uses a much smaller and maybe simpler game map. This typically doubles the FPS and 1080 resolution has the Radeon averaging 134 FPS and providing 1% lows in the high 90s. 1600 by 900 further increases those numbers to 168 and 121 respectively, while at 720 resolution the card gets the average and 1% lows up to 204 and 134 FPS respectively. Terminator Resistance lists the GTX 1050 and the RX 560 as minimum requirements for 60 FPS at 1080 resolution medium settings. But if you're willing to drop the resolution to 720 and the settings to their lowest, the HD 7770 can deliver 58 FPS on average and 41-41% lows. And that's without any 3D scaling feature enabled. The game is playable and its slow pace still makes for a good game experience even on the older Radeon. Overwatch 2 runs on average at lowest settings between low 70s at 1080 resolution and 145 FPS at 720 resolution. While the 1% lows in the mid 50s might seem ok at 1080 resolution, lower resolution will have that metric in the 70s or even above 100 FPS. Something worth noting, since most players of this game are quite competitive. Zenless Zone Zero, a game from the developers of Genshin Impact, is actually playable on the HD 7770. At 720 resolution and lower settings, both your typical combat scenes and the free roaming parts in the city average 42 FPS. The cinematic 1% lows are not that much of a problem during combat, so the overall game experience is fine. Oddly enough, the FPS will drop in the teens during dialogue cutscenes that involve 3 participants. Otherwise, the game runs ok. Dota 2 runs acceptable, at least for me, at 1080 resolution and low settings. This should not come as a surprise, we tested this game previously on weaker cards and the experience was fine. No upscaling has been used and the card averaged in the high 80s while the 1% lows reached 50 FPS. Control ran almost identically as a year ago. The test run between ventilation and the top of the NCP reactor averaged 50 FPS. The 1% lows in the mid 20s is less than stellar, but that didn't prevent me from playing a good deal of the game on the HD 7770. Mind you, the graphical options were set to their minimum value and the resolution used was 1280 by 720. GTA 5 is old enough so that 1080 and low settings is not much of a challenge for the HD 7770. The average FPS stayed in the 80s during the benchmark run and the 1% lows were a good 60 FPS. This is more than adequate for a single player game. Warframe also ran as good as it did a year ago. At 1080 resolution and a mix of settings, mostly on low, the Radeon averaged 116 FPS and with the 1% lows in the mid 70s, the game plays just fine. Like a lot of the games that rely on a large base of players, this title is still enjoyable on a card as old as the HD 7770. Unlike in 2023, Rainbow Six Siege did not experience a regression in performance. At the lower settings, the card averages between 51 FPS at 1080 resolution and 100% render scale, and 121 at 720 resolution and 50% render scale. The 1% lows value become adequate, meaning above 60, only for the 720 resolutions, so stick with that when playing the game on the HD 7770. The catalog of games that the HD 7770 can play is still fairly large. Reviews from previous years will show you how it handles titles like Battlefield 5, Genshin Impact, World of Tanks, Valorant and so on. And dedicated feature videos can provide a clearer picture on how other games run on this card. Yes, this card is old. No, it will not run the latest and greatest titles. Resident Evil 4 got 9 FPS in the menu, the Stranding didn't even launch and I won't even dare to run the finals or X Defined. But that doesn't mean that it's all doom and gloom if all you have is this card. There's still plenty of fun to be had using it. This is it for this video, thanks for watching, I hope you liked it and I'll see you for the next one.